Learn from every mistake because every experience, encounter, and particularly your mistakes are there to teach you and force you into being more of who you are. And then figure out what is the next right move. And the key to life is to develop an internal, moral, emotional GPS that can tell you which way to go. Because now and forevermore, when you Google yourself, your search results will read, Harvard 2013. <laughs> and in a very competitive world, that really is a calling card, because I can tell you as one who employs a lot of people, when I see Harvard, I sit up a little straight and say, where is he or she? Bring them in. It's an impressive calling card that can lead to even more impressive bullets in the years ahead. Lawyer, senator, CEO, scientist, physicist, winners of Nobel and Pulitzer Prizes, or late night talk show host. But the challenge of life, I have found, is to build a resume that doesn't simply tell a story about what you want to be, but it's a story about who you want to be. It's a resume that doesn't just tell a story about what you want to accomplish, but why. A story that's not just a collection of titles and, and positions, but a story that's really about your purpose. Because when you inevitably stumble and find yourself stuck in a hole, that is the story that will get you out. What is your true calling? What is your dharma? What is your purpose? For me, that discovery came in 1994 when I interviewed a little girl who, who had decided to collect pocket change in order to help other people in need. She raised $1,000 all by herself, and I thought, well, if that little nine-year-old girl with a bucket and a big heart could do that, I wonder what I could do. So I asked for our viewers to take up their own change collection, and in one month, just from pennies, and nickels and dimes, we raised more than $3 million that we used to send one student from every state in the United States to college. That was the beginning of the Angel Network. So what I did was I simply asked our viewers, do what you can wherever you are, from wherever you sit in life. Give me your time or your talent, your money if you have it, and they did. Extend yourself in kindness to other human beings wherever you can. And together we built 55 schools in 12 different countries and restored nearly 300 homes that were devastated by Hurricanes Rita and Katrina. So the Angel Network, I've been on the air for a long time, but it was the Angel Network that actually focused my internal GPS. It helped me to decide that I wasn't just gonna be on TV every day, but that the goal of my shows, my interviews, my business, my philanthropy, all of it, whatever ventures I might pursue, would be to make clear that what unites us is ultimately far more redeeming and compelling than anything that separates me. Because what had become clear to me, and I want you to know it isn't always clear in the beginning, because as I said, I've been on television since I was 19 years old. But around 94, I got really clear. So don't expect the clarity to come all at once, to know your purpose right away. But what became clear to me was that I was here on earth to use television and not be used by it. To use television to illuminate the transcendent power of our better angels. So, this Angel Network, it didn't just change the lives of those who were helped, but the lives of those who also did the helping. It reminded us that no matter who we are, or what we look like, or what we may believe, it is both possible, and more importantly, it, it becomes powerful to come together in common purpose and common effort. I saw something on the Bill Moore show recently that so reminded me of this point. It was an interview with David and Francine Wheeler. They lost their seven-year-old son, Ben, in the Sandy Hook tragedy. 
And even though gun safety legislation to strengthen background checks had just been voted down in Congress at the time that they were doing this interview, they talked about how they refused to be discouraged. Francine said this, she said, our hearts are broken, but our spirits are not. I'm gonna tell them what it's like to find a conversation about change that is love, and I'm gonna do that without fighting them. And then her husband David added this, you simply cannot demonize or vilify someone who doesn't agree with you. Because the minute you do that, your discussion is over. And we cannot do that any longer. The problem is too enormous. There has to be some way that this darkness can be banished with light. In our political system and in the media, we often see the reflection of a country that is polarized, that is paralyzed, and is self-interested. And yet, I know you know the truth. We all know that we are better than the cynicism and the pessimism that is regurgitated throughout Washington and the 24-hour cable news cycle. We understand that the vast majority of people in this country believe in stronger background checks because they realize that we can uphold the Second Amendment and also reduce the violence that is robbing us of our children. They don't have to be incompatible. And we understand that most Americans believe in a clear path to citizenship for the 12 million undocumented immigrants who reside in this country because it's possible to both enforce our laws and at the same time embrace the words on the Statue of Liberty that have welcomed generations of huddle masses to our shores. We can do both.